Hi everyone, I'm Arushi Bhattacharya, partner with Asia Pacific Kings Legate Partners. We are an international search firm that's focused on leadership and board recruitment. This year, Kings Legate Partners plans to start a new series called Her Corner Office. We bring to light the stories of opportunities, challenges, achievements that have catapulted leading women executives to success. And therefore, who better to connect with as we dive into the first of our special series of conversations but Nalini. Nalini, it's an absolute pleasure connecting with you today. Thank you. To all, of, to all of you out there, Nalini is not just the Chief People Officer of Rakuten India, but she's also on the board. She works as a coach and an advisor to the leadership team. With 20 years experience working across multiple cultures, including India, Japan, US, UK, Canada, and Korea. She spearheaded successful implementation of HR strategies and best practices aligned with the global mandate and has transformed the role of HR from a support function to being a key business enabler. Prior to joining Rakuten, Nalini has worked with companies including CGI, Tesco, Infolabs and Star TV, where she played a significant role in transforming the face of HR, driving employee initiatives at organizational level and establishing employer brand value globally. Nalini holds a master's degree in international management from Arizona, US. She's an avid reader, a multitasker, an ex-NCC cadet, wow, and a tennis enthusiast. So in conversation now with Nalini George. Nalini, amazing opportunity, like I said, to have you with us today to share your experiences and advice. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Arushi. So Nalini, you know, uh, amazing experience, amazing journey that you've had. And I think we all have so much to learn and take away from all of this. Um, have you drawn any professional inspiration from other women? Could you tell us about somebody who's inspired you in particular? Wow. Um, there are many, Arushi, but I, I, I would say that I used to follow somebody very closely for a long time, you know, from whom I've drawn professional inspiration. Um, it's none other than Michelle Batchett, uh, oh, yeah. Our, yeah, a former president of Tilly. Uh, but I know I've even written a white paper about her. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I wrote a white paper about her and how, what I felt about, you know, uh, what this leader has done to my life. What inspired me so much about Michelle is her dedication and commitment. And, and anything that she's taken, right, it's, it's taken with so much of commitment and passion. Uh, she followed her passion. That's one thing I always... Uh, you know, uh, respected because, you know, a medical background. And then she went on to studying military affairs, becoming a health minister, defense minister, and, and finally a president of Chile, right? It's it's not easy. And, mm -hmm. and including how much she went through in her personal life. But her focus was to make sure that the country is taken care of. And I used to draw inspiration on how she moved different roles. And in every role, she stood so tall and strong. Um, and for many, many years, Arushi, I've followed her. And I, I, I don't do it anymore, but I, I, I would only think of that when for this particular question that you asked. Sure. I mean, that's uh, that's very, very, actually a very inspiring person. And, uh, you know, I think we have so much that we can draw uh, you know, where we can draw inspiration from, uh, especially, you know, think about 20 years ago, uh, when we were just entering the task force, right, and the women who preceded us, it really makes me think about how many challenges they faced and what they kind of have been able to achieve and help us come to where we are today, and how we're going to set the course going forward. That is so true. That's so true. Yeah. Very interesting, Nalini. And in terms of, uh, you know, your experience around, you know, what do you think? Is it really important to have a mentor to grow as a leader? Um, and what steps can our, you know, women leaders or the younger women take to build that relationship in an organization or outside, really, within an organization? I mean, not everyone is lucky to have a valuable mentor. Uh, you know, there are many, many who have, you know, been what they are without mentors. But if you ask me, um, I would surely say if there is an option to have a mentor, grab it. 
literally. And I always tell this for our early leaders, right? I say early in your career, try to identify someone, shamelessly seek advice. It's perfectly okay, you know. And there are a lot of women, a lot of other leaders who are willing to help. It's just that you need to be shameless in asking for that. And some of the important things, because I personally am a mentor for many, and, and I've done this for many, many years, some things that I feel is very, very critical is the commitment. Because if there is no commitment, uh, everything falls down. And there has to be a visible progress. You know, I see that, you know, every time I mentor someone, some mentorship are very formal, some are informal, but I like to see that visible progress that happens. And a mentor always would like to see some change and there has to be transparency and trust in what you see. Uh, you know, what I've also seen, Arushi, is very surprising. Some of this mentorship relationship, they go for years and they turn into beautiful relationship after that, you know, because they don't need you as a mentor after a while. And then it, it becomes a beautiful relationship after that. Yeah. Well, that's a lovely thing to say. And I've experienced that myself as well. So I think you're absolutely yeah. spot on. Uh, so how do you dis- how do you empower others, Nalini, with people around you, the people that you work with? How do you empower them? What's your work style? Wow. Uh, for <laughs> me, uh, empowerment comes with the trust in the team. It's very, very important. And my team, I'm sure even if you talk to them now, I rightly empower them. You know, right. uh, I, I tell them what the responsibility is. And I'm a person who kind of gives them the freedom. And it's largely, it's a culture that I build very early in the team. And, and however, there are rules. There are some rules. End of the day, I'm responsible for the department. So I have to be very careful. But the decisions they take, uh, it's okay to make mistakes. I allow them to make mistakes. That's when we build the trust. That's when we tell them that you can, you know, do what you want. However, I, I clearly say that don't avoid any repeat mistakes. It's yeah. very, very, important, very important when you empower uh, people under you, right? I also give them the freedom to come back and talk to me. It's okay to ask silly questions. Yeah. I, if they all know that I don't play judge. So it's okay to come and ask me questions. I treat them as friends first and then direct reports. That gives them the motivation, that gives them the power. And also the responsibility that, you know, they can't let the business down. They cannot let me down. So, uh, but that's helped me a lot, Arushi. When you empower people, a lot of your work, you don't need to think so much. It's already been handed over and it's, it's been handled by people. Yeah, sure. So, you know, this is, this, is, uh, this is all the insights that in terms of how you work with people. What about you yourself? Uh, Nalini, what have been your drivers for success? What are the lessons that you've learned being a woman leader, reaching where you have, the successes that you've seen, the failures that you might have seen along the way? What really have been your drivers and what are the lessons learned? I would say it's it's the passion I have to do the right things. Uh, you know, I'm very passionate. It doesn't matter what I take. I take complete ownership with commitment. And I've had this for many, many years and I've seen success. So, you know, it's something that I always tell people that when you when something is working, continue doing it. Don't make too many changes. And my drivers has always been being passionate, take ownership of something I've done. Lessons learned, um, you know, I've learned a lot of lessons, but then one thing that I, you know, it's probably, I've learned the hard way, right? Is don't take your hands off. It's, it's a very, very critical deliverable or project. You know, uh, because when you do that, I mean, you might have given it to a star performer, you trust them, you empower them. But if it's something critical, make sure that you're always there monitoring at all levels. And that's something I I, I have learned the hard way, Arushi. Yeah. And so has there ever been a time, Nalini, where you felt so discouraged that you wanted to quit? A big yes. But, um, you know, I've been discouraged several times, Sarushi, but, you know, um, but I don't remember quitting. You know, I don't remember even thinking quitting. I I don't remember at all. Uh, Even I have to pause and think of many situations I've gone through in the last two decades. But, you know, the challenging patches that come in the corporate world, um, it surprises you. It throws surprises at you. But the learning is to make sure that you're resilient all through. It's very, very important. And you you need to know that you can handle it. And most of the time, I think it's 
you, you know you can handle it and sometimes time heals you know yeah. a combination of both and uh, you just keep pursuing yeah i think uh, you know of course being in the leadership is so so stressful at times yeah right and reaching where you have i think they you know you build friendships along the way you build trust along the way you have mentors so it's it's like an entire ecosystem around you that helps you kind of move forward and thrive right yeah. but you know with all the stresses and stuff at workplace and it sounds very cliched but with this uh you know work life balance and stuff um, how do you really get to unwind because i know you're wearing multiple hats nalini so it's hats yes. off to you really i wonder <laughs> how you unwind very nice question but you know i must confess there are times it's very very stressful you know yeah. i cannot say that you know every day is is good but um i try to get my me time because uh, my job involves talking i'm always talking i'm either in meetings i'm presenting or people i'm with people but you know i i i kind of crave for this me time which is a silent time dedicated for myself i try to get that it could be weekends it could be maybe off after work um the second thing is maybe a glass of wine and a good netflix suspense <laughs> movie you know and that charges me back yeah on a weekend yeah, yeah. <laughs> that resonates very well with me as well so <laughs> amazing <laughs> okay that's a key takeaway for a lot of women executives who need to unwind right <laughs> of course yeah okay. works for me for sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so you know uh, nalini a little flavor you know as far as the organization culture building and industry trends are concerned if we move towards that so you know with the growing push for organizations to become diversity ready how do you really balance the concept of diversity with a drive for culture fit you know arshi it's a, it, this is a very very big word you know when you talk about diversity uh, you know i mean i've seen both the worlds i you know when i started my career there were very very few women you know forget about leadership roles even at the manager level right yeah. but i think the workforce has changed completely particularly in the last couple of decades what i've seen um, last 10 years for sure right um organizations have reaped a lot having a diverse workforce and i have seen it personally but i think when you're talking about culture i know the culture fit and diversity the term both terms have to coexist you know yeah. both diversity and culture fit have to coexist um a, a lot of organizations do this for the right thing you know they change uh, it, the change in an organization is a very lengthy process you know uh we have a lot of diversity programs we run a lot of programs a lot of communication but i think where the organization also have to spend is changing the culture culture has to be made at the grass, grassroot level you know it, it, it it's something you have to feel it's a behavior you know and like what you know i always think about this and it's a very famous quote i'm sure all of you are aware of it you know mother teresa right i can't just change the old my the whole world myself but i can cast a stone and you know you, you can create multiple ripples creating those ripples within the organization is very very critical Yeah. just the leadership they they talk about diversity is top down i don't think so diversity is a ripple that you have to create the culture is a ripple that we have to create and a lot of organizations have been very very successful in doing that and i personally have a, a beautiful wonderful team in my organization who's driving this for us we talk we call about diversity equity and uh, you know uh, inclusion yeah but uh, but yeah they have to coexist uh, arushian it, and it's a long process until we it becomes you know one of those things that we all live and we don't talk about it anymore sure i agree with you i think it's just supposed to become a way of life in a way right instead yeah. of yeah yeah and and the day we stop asking questions around that probably is very the day true. that we actually yeah very true. i very true absolutely yeah. get yeah okay and in terms of you know we we usually like to ask um, you know our guests to share a prediction about their industry you know don't it's meet up questions <laughs> 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 so you know it's particularly important considering that we are living in so much of uncertainty you know with the businesses uh you know what are your predictions uh for the industry in 2022 uh i don't necessarily mean business wise it could mean on any front people change culture what do you see in 2022 wow um 
I mean, what a question, Arshi. But but this is my personal opinion, right? I what I see and what what I feel that the change that will happen in 2022 and maybe beyond that is, uh, you know, leadership and senior roles were all about tenure and you know experience. What I see and what, what I predict is that you know the role, the senior roles where you know you have a lot of responsibility will be capability and fitment driven, and especially leaders who thrive and who can quickly adapt to this change and who can drive change in the organization uh, will be lead future leaders. I know nobody was going to look at how long you've been in the industry, what is your experience, what do you bring? It's, it's all about you adapting to change and quickly moving is what is going to happen. Uh, and, and, and we're not going to talk about, you know, you have 15 years experience, 20 years experience, it's going to be that person who will make a change. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's, uh, as a search firm, that's what we are seeing, uh, hiring across multiple leadership positions. Uh, this seems to be where it's headed. So you're absolutely right. I think um, it's about the attitude. It's about the ability, the agility of people, uh, the ability to kind of accept change and move with it and get forward with it. I think those are things that's where it's headed for sure. Yeah. Very interesting, uh, Nalini. And, um, you know, I'm going to ask you a question which is really about, and this is going to be probably one of the key questions that I'd like to ask you, uh, you know, as part of our conversation. Can you share with us some great leadership advice that you've ever gotten as part of your career? Uh, Or, you know, even what advice you would give to your 24-year-old self as you go forward? Wow. I wish I was 24 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, there's one thing I will um, say that works, that will you, you can close your eyes and, you know, implement if possible, is learning to be resilient. Uh, this is not something you need to inherit. You can learn. It's very, very important. And being committed and focused uh, very early in your career, you know, because this forms a foundation for everything that you do in life. You know, uh, resilience is something I feel is something we can, we can take you through anywhere. Forget about your corporate life, even in your personal life. You know, if you have resilience, you can deal with so many things. You know, yeah. um, constant learning, Arushi, is something I feel is you cannot ignore. A lot of people are left behind because, you know, they don't keep up to date. Uh, learning is, is continuous. All of us have to learn. It doesn't matter what your role is. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter at what stage of your career you're in. You have to constantly learn. Um, and these are two things I feel that, you know, I would say a 24-year-old me. <laughs> Fantastic, Melanie. You know, uh, what really throughout this entire conversation is, I mean, it just comes straight from your heart. And that's something that I love because I think this is a journey that you've lived I think this is amazing insights that you've shared, uh, amazing in advice that you've shared. And I think what is really important and my key takeaways, I think I have a lot to learn from you as well, Nalini, and I hope I ever get the chance to work with you and you know learn a lot more from you. But I think, yes, resilience, um, trust, culture building, agility, all of those factors are really going to start kicking in. I think those are things that we really need to look out for. And, you know, women executives, they're getting, they're moving far ahead in their career. Um, I think a lot of people prior to us have paved the way for us and we need to do the same for people ahead of us and, uh, you know, look forward to some mentorship from you going forward. Thank you, Arshi. I'm really enjoying this conversation and, uh, you know, I hope whatever we spoke will help somebody somewhere around the world. I doesn't, I'm not even sure who's going to get access to this, but I hope this will be helpful to somebody. I'm sure it will, Nalini. Like you said, it's the ripple effect. So we just need to create the <laughs> ripples and it's going to happen, right? Love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me today, Nalini. It was really a pleasure speaking with you and I hope to stay connected and learn a lot more. Thank you. Thank you.